Hello and welcome back to my channel. <laughs> I'm here to talk to you again about Live 2D and hopefully you can learn something new. Specifically, I want to talk about the Live 2D 4.1 update that released in June. I believe it was June 10th. So they added some new features that are very useful. <laughs> and I'd like to just explain how to use some of them. So yeah, keep watching. So the feature that I'm especially excited to tell you about because it's the most useful one for me is this mesh path tool. Might not make sense straight away, but let me explain. So for example, I have this model here. I've imported the PSD, so it's all fresh. There's no um, mesh as of yet. As you can see, it's all fresh. I do have a finished version here, but that's, don't worry about that. So I find this especially to be useful on stuff like the eyebrows, mouth, and eye shapes because you have to imagine it's a tool that draws lines. So the first thing you want to do is enter the edit mesh manually tab and then just erase the automatically generated mesh at the start and then click this little icon here it's a yes yeah, stroke mesh mapping <laughs> that's what it's called it has an actual name it's pretty easy to use um you can use it with your mouse if you have a tablet and that might be easier i'm not sure but i just use my mouse and you draw along the line it doesn't have to be perfect when you're drawing here because you can edit it very easily afterwards but you'll see it creates some points automatically based on where you drew so you can click these green points and drag them along because they might not be exactly where you want them and you can add more by just clicking in any area that doesn't have a green point and putting it there and you can create this mesh and like it's almost pretty useful i <laughs> i do think so but you might notice that it's a little bit small or a little thin as of now. It doesn't completely cover the eyelashes. And we also have some problems here with the shape. So we can fix that by looking at the tool details box here. So the first thing we want to do is make it a little bit wider. So the mesh width, you can type it in manually if you like. But if you just um, hover over it, there should be this icon and you can slide it. If you click and drag. So we're just going to make it a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to push that back over here. And then the other thing is, if it's for an eye shape, you might want more vertices than this. It might not be enough to make it look like a very smooth transition. So this here, repeated density, will be able to increase or reduce the amount of triangles you have. So we want a couple more. <laughs> and then this one here, number of vertices and mesh width. So we can see right now it's at two, but if we do three, it's increased to this three vertices. But if we go back to two, there's only two. There's one. Uh, that's like nothing. So I don't know why you would want to do that. I'm not sure why that's an option. But for, for the eye shape, I think that three is good. I think two can work well with eyebrows and possibly other shapes, but it's really up to your discretion. But I think that three works pretty well. The last thing that I want to explain about this is if you if you hold control and click the yellow circle and drag, you can kind of edit it so that as you can see, it's created this gradation of shape. So from here, the shape is a lot thinner, but at the base over here, it's a lot wider. And that works well from the shape that we're creating right now. Um, I might want to edit it a little bit afterwards, but overall, the shape is really good and it didn't take much time at all. It only took a little bit extra time than it normally does because I was explaining it. But make sure once you've finished editing the stroke, you can click 
this little box here or you can do shift e but i <laughs> i don't re remember shortcuts like this easily so i click here and then you can click the check mark and have a look at it but i wanted to edit a bit a little bit here just a tiny bit because the, the major thing about this um stroke pastel is that it works best when you already know how to make meshes and how you want them to look and it's a very good base mesh and it's very easy to streamline your process but i wouldn't say every single time you want to only use this stroke method like it's good to edit it afterwards if there's some misshapen areas and look at that we have a really nice mesh for this overall it's like a really fast and easy way to create meshes for things like your mouths, eyebrows, or eye shapes. Specifically these uh, shapes that have long thin lines. So yeah, please try it out. <laughs> okay, so the next uh, tool I'd like to talk about is this one here. The deform brush tool. You can see that it's in brackets beta. Um, this is an interesting one. It's kind of like in Photoshop the liquify tool. I would say is very similar to that. So for example, if we just do the face. So right now we have my character. This is already modeled, but if we want to make adjustments, you can click this brush tool and then adjust the mesh like this if that makes sense and then if we look whoa whoa <laughs> her head's clipping out oh no <laughs> that's terrible <laughs> you, you, you probably don't want to do exactly this but as you can see it's a uh, very useful and the other major thing is it's not just the art mesh you can also use it on deformers like this if you need to make small adjustments i find this is a really nice detailing brush if um generally on the x and y axes when you're just trying to get it right like for me when i try and get the head shape right when they're looking to the left and right i think this is a really useful tool to shape this area and that's how i would normally use it uh, major thing is if you hold down b you can change the brush size as you can see i'm doing here so hold down b and drag left click and then you can also see the brush there's two circles this brush stiffness is the second circle so you kind of can imagine it a little bit like an airbrush so the middle circle is the stronger area and the second circle is the more softer area so it just depends on how strong you want the brush to be working and i find that this is very useful when you're doing angles and stuff so yes please please try and use it yes <laughs> okay so the next new tool that i'd like to introduce is the temporary pass the form tool so this is very useful for um things like hair physics i find so what it is, normally with an art mesh, you can click on it and then click this uh, pass edit tool here and then just do that. And then you can just like, wow, amazing. And up until now, you could only do this on the art mesh itself. Now you can use it on deformers so you can't just click this tool and expect it to work unfortunately it's not exactly the same but it's very similar you'll have to go to modeling and then under modeling there's temporary deform tool there's a lot of options here but the one i want to look at is temporary path and we click that and you might instantly be like oh what's happening oh no why is that grayed out don't worry what we do now is click the nodes that we want to make but also remember that these are not exactly the same as the other path tools so they're a little bit clunky to use i guess is the word because while you're editing it 
for example on this one while you're creating the nodes you can adjust where the position is but as soon as you put a node here it seems that you can't exactly do that with these ones because i believe they're temporary um and so once you put them there you can start editing the whole deformer and there's two different art meshes in here oops and we can see like i said it would be a good way to do physics if you want this to kind of swing this way and then swing this way i feel as if it would be very useful but i'm sure there's plenty of ways that you can use this tool and i think that it's very useful <laughs> the other thing i want to say is uh unlike this uh the art mesh deform path tool once you've done it and you've already made the editing changes that you want you click this button here and you can't instantly use the same path with the art mesh you will still be able to use the same path even after you've changed it a little but this one because it's temporary you can't do that so it's a little a bit unfortunate that you can't do that but it's still very useful i find yeah so the other tool that's quite useful is very similar to the deform pass uh temporary deform pass tool for deformers it's um under modeling temporary deform tool again and this one's temporary warp def deformation <laughs> and so we click that and you can see there's these blue areas instead of um the nodes that you make they've already been made here and you can warp this just like that and once again it's temporary so it works very similarly to the nodes um but you might notice that these aren't a lot of points to work with it's a little bit small so you can add more <laughs> that's way too much you can add more warp divisions here and get a little bit more detailed it's just a i haven't find, found myself using this one so much but it is an interesting tool that you are able to use um if for whatever reason you don't want so many nodes on your uh green deformer the regular deformer this could be quite useful and then like the nodes you press the tick button and then it'll goes away <laughs> you won't be able to use it the exact same one again you can set it up similarly but you shouldn't uh, you wouldn't be able to use the exact same one again. But yeah. So the other temporary transform tools, you might have seen them while I was going into temporary deform tool. They're also all new, I believe. And you can just uh, do kind of like anything. You can edit which one you're using here. Temporary pass, temporary warp. If you accidentally click the wrong one in the modeling area. And rotation, like... You can do whatever you like, really, with this. So, I think it would be interesting to try out the different stuff if you're having some problems. Uh, exactly warping the thing how you want it to. I thought I just saw this perspective one and I got some good ideas. Wow, that's actually really useful. <laughs> That'll be really useful for animations. So yeah, try them out. <laughs>